you're still full scale. Uh, the audio isn't quite as clean as the Bofang was. I don't know. Really? There, there's just something funny about it. All right, so this radio was released a few months ago, and I just had to try one out to see if it was any good. Of course, I'm talking about the Bofang BF F8 HP Pro. I don't know how pro it is, but it does have some pretty cool features that you wouldn't expect to find on a radio at this price point, which is around $70 at the making of this video. The radio and packaging are actually designed in South Dakota, which is good, but the radio is still made in China. Now just so you know, this is not a sponsored video. I bought this with my own money, so my opinions are unbiased whether or not this thing is junk and we're going to get into that towards the end of the video. Also, you should know this is an amateur radio, and you're going to need at least a technician license from the FCC to be able to legally transmit on this radio. Yes, there are some frequencies that it'll transmit on that's outside of the ham bands, and we're going to get into that here in just a minute. So, what's in the box? Let's check that out. All right, so first off, we have this desktop charger right here. Now, this plugs directly into the wall with no wall wart. However, in my opinion, I think the cord is a little bit short at only 35 inches long. All right, so next up we have two antennas that it comes with. The longer one is for VHF, UHF, and the shorter one is for 2 meters and 220. Now these antennas use a male SMA, and the female is located in the radio itself. So if you need to adapt this to a uh, SO239 connector, you'll need to know that to make sure to get the right connector. Now, by the way, I thought the shorter antenna was missing when I first got this thing, but it turns out it was hiding really good up in here. So if yours is, seems like it's missing, look up in here and see if they didn't put it in the same place. And, of course, we have a belt clip and a nice wrist strap right here. The screws for the belt clip are located inside the uh, HT body right here. And, of course, we also have a USB-A to USB-C charging cable which is one feature I really do like about this radio because we have a USB-C connector right here in the back of the battery. So that makes that really nice. You can use your phone adapter that's already set up. You really don't even need the desk charger. And then of course we have this earpiece that I think is a little on the cheesy side. So uh, kind of do what you want with that. But anyway, it comes with that. And then of course, let's not forget about the manual which I think is written actually fairly well, and the English is fairly good, probably because this is written in South Dakota, like I'd mentioned before. And last but not least, we do have the radio itself. It does feel nice and weighty and solid, so I do like the build quality on that. It does not feel cheap to me. Now here at the top of the radio, we have the SMA female connector. We have the GPS satellite antenna, and then we have the volume control. Here on the right side, we have the jack for the microphone and the speaker and also the jack for your PCO3 computer cable that you would use for Chirp and firmware updates and stuff like that. We'll get into more of that here in just a second. That cable is about $23 at the time of this video, and I would also probably want to stick with an OEM cable. I've used generic cables before, and well, they didn't work, at least not for me. So here on the left, we do have our PTT. And we do have two programmable keys here that can be customized to several different functions. I'll get into that here and more in just a second. And this one right here, if you push and hold, you can use that for a monitor key as well. Now on the front, we have a nice full color screen that can actually display one or two frequencies at the same time. As you can see right now, I've got it set to single frequency, but I can still change the VFOs here just by pushing A and B. However, you should know it won't actually receive two independent frequencies at the same time. It's one or the other. This is dual watch. That's what we have here. When one is done, the other one will pick up right away. Dual receive, on the other hand, requires two independent receivers so that you can play them both simultaneously. That's not what we have here. So speaking of receive, this radio has a really nice receive in it. It'll cover AM aircraft band, FM broadcast, GMRS, FRS, 220, VHF, UHF, MURS, NOAA weather. It's got a lot of coverage in there, okay? And that's all for the low, low price of only $69.95. Please send check or money order. No, never mind. Now, the transmit is pretty wide too, okay? I'm going to have to read this part. The transmit will go all the way from 136 to 173.990. 200 to 259 990 and 400 to 519 so very wide coverage now with all that being said you 
need at least an amateur technician license to operate this radio on the ham bands. As far as I know, it's only type accepted to work on the ham bands. If you use it outside of those bands, you do so at your own risk. Even if you have a GMRS license, it's still not really type accepted to use on that band. Now, could you get away with it? You probably could, since the coverage is probably only a couple of miles, but I just had to mention it anyway, okay? All right, so real quick to get into the 10 NOA weather channels, just press and hold zero. Now, if you want to initiate a scan, press and hold pound. Scan all right that's all you got to do to get out press and hold zero again all right so let's quickly dive into the menu real quick it's pretty intuitive but there are a couple of things in here that don't make sense here let me show you just press this home key that gets you into the menu now we got uh, just to navigate just use your arrow keys up and down and to select press home all right now here's one of the things that doesn't make sense under number four we have transmit power why is that under program channel? To me, program channel is memory stuff and stuff like that. Transmit power should be under radio setting, at least in my opinion. But there is a solution. Like if you want a quick setting for transmit power, go up to radio setting. And then remember the two buttons on the side I told you? They're programmable. Well, let's explore what those do real quick. I think it's item 27. Okay, SK1 and SK2. Those are the buttons on the side. SK1 is the orange one, the top one. So I've got mine set for transmit power. So select using home. All right, so that's transmit power. But what, what else will it do? It'll do NOAA. It'll do FM radio, scan, search, Vox, transmit power. So if you want to select one, okay, just hit transmit power, save OK. I've got my SK2 set to... FM radio, so very nice, you can do that. That affects the uh, transmit power, if you see right here, is a little H, M, L, and then of course one touch radio right here brings up your radio, so just press that again to get rid of that. All right, so remember I mentioned the dual watch uh, function earlier, and you can also display two frequencies on the display here at the same time. Now let's go ahead and do that, menu, radio setting now that's one that actually does make sense all right so let's go to item 15 single watch now you want to disable that and then enable dual watch item 14 and that'll bring up your two frequencies now notice that no item 15 here has changed your single watch option doesn't even come up unless dual watch is disabled all right so now we got uh, both frequencies here and I think we're in VFO mode, so switch back and forth. Now remember, it's one or the other. It can't play both frequencies at the same time because it doesn't have two independent receivers. Now, of course, there's many things that you can set up in the menu, like programming in some of the thousand memories, repeater offset, repeater tones. I'll touch some more on the uh, tones uh, momentarily. It is much easier if you use a software program like Chirp. The radio is compatible with Chirp and uh, Bofang actually has their own software that works pretty good and I'm going to show you that here in a second. I mentioned earlier that there's a GPS antenna right here at the top of the radio. Now this is a really cool feature that I wouldn't expect to find on such a cheap, uh, I, I, <clears throat> I mean low priced radio. Now you can actually send your coordinates to other radios that have this feature but you're going to have to consult the manual on how to do that. Now to quickly enable the GPS receiver press and hold AB and if you notice a little red satellite icon appeared right there, that'll turn kind of a yellowish green when it's locked in. Now if you want to display your coordinates, press and hold menu. There's nothing displayed right there because it's still acquiring, but it'll give you your uh, latitude and longitude and speed and altitude and all that stuff. So very cool to get out of this. Just press the back arrow. Now the acquisition time for this is probably a couple of minutes outside. And if you're inside, it's going to take a little bit longer. It's not super fast, but it's not that bad either. Now, these coordinates could be really helpful if you find yourself lost in the woods or on the SS Minnow and you wind up getting stuck on an uninhabited island. If you want to fine-tune the GPS settings, just go into Menu, right here under Number 4, GPS, and you can fine-tune all your GPS parameters right there, okay? So this radio has a really useful scan feature. 
not only can it scan for a specific range of frequencies that you can access under menu and then scan and then frequency range is the first option there I've got it set to 146 to 148 and then you would initiate the scan by just pressing pound what I was talking about was is it can scan for a CTCSS tone watch this go back to menu scan Number three here, scan for subcode. Very useful. Now, if you are uh, in an area where you have an unfamiliar repeater, you got a QSO going on, you want to join the QSO, but you don't know what repeater that is or what the tone is, you can use this to scan for the subcode. Hit home. You're going to want to probably leave it on CTCSS. All right. As you can see, it's scanning for the tone. Now to save time, I don't have a local repeater that I'm trying to uh, find the code for, so I've set my HT to broadcast a tone. My other one is in a dummy load, of course. See right there, it found the tone, 103.5 to lock that in. Just press OK. Now you'll also have to save your repeater offset and all that to make this stuff work. And you find that under Program Channel. Items 12 and 13 right there, Offset and Direction. So that's most of the basic stuff. You might be familiar with the Chirp software, and Bofang also has their own software that's free that you can use to do some other things, including update the firmware. If you go to their website, I'll post a link in the description, you can actually download both. I'll, I'll show you here real quick. Here's the, uh, the latest Chirp software, and it does include the uh, BFF8 Pro right here when you download the latest Chirp software which is really nice because you're always searching well my radio isn't listed well it is now and then if you scroll down here to the bottom their uh, software is Windows only and it's right here on this side right here for the Bofeng uh, BFF8 Pro so let me show you that real quick alright so here's their software right here let's go ahead and download our frequencies from the radio the radio should say program when it's uh, actually reading from the radio so very nice it gives you an indication there some feedback and there's all our frequencies so a couple of cool things about this in addition to the uh, firmware go right here to tools and you can see the bottom one here is firmware but you can actually upload a startup picture to your radio a custom picture so you just go in there and you just select your picture whatever you want it to say now it does have to be a 160 by 128 bitmap file, BMP. So we're going to uh, select this picture, upload it. Now when we start the radio, we should have that picture on the uh, startup screen. And there it is. So very cool feature. It, it's kind of a gimmick, but you know it's free. Uh, so why not, you know, just go ahead and take advantage of that. Another thing you can do, is, which is kind of a... <laughs> this is a real gimmick if you ask me but you can actually customize the voice you can put your own voice in there all these um, numbers right here where you push the button and it says zero one two you can put your own voice in there you just have to record individual files for all this and you can upload those files so very cool all right so I'm not gonna go through and show how to program all the frequencies and the offsets and the tones and all that kind of stuff I've already kind of touched on all that stuff. It's pretty easy, especially if you have the software and the cable, but you don't even need that. The book will show you how to do all that stuff. If you don't want to spend the $20 on the cable, it's not necessary. So very good. Let me uh, do an on-air test, and I want to compare this to my um, inexpensive um, ICOM V86 right here, and we'll get kind of an audio comparison because this one is a kind of a bottom-of-the-line ICOM, and that's kind of a top-of-the-line Bofang, so we'll see how they stack up together, okay? Let me see if I can rile up any of my buddies. And for our YouTube audience, we have properly identified already off-camera, so for you guys that think we are transmitting with no uh, call sign, we've already done that. So Art, uh, I'm on the Bofang here. How's it going? Yeah, sounds real good. It's in nice and clear. Uh, full signal. You're... Uh-oh, <laughs> you cut out there at the end. Was that you? Oh, no, not this microphone again. Not the new mic. Okay, good. It was on his end, folks. It was on his end. So let me switch over to the ICOM here, and uh, we'll kind of get a comparison between these two, and uh, we'll just uh, ask him for his honest opinion. We'll be right back. All right, so we're on the... Uh, oh, let me, turn the uh, let me turn the other radio down. We're on the, uh, the ICOM V86... Uh, 
A little bit less power than the Bofang. We're at about 5.5 watts right there. Uh, what say you? Okay, you're still full scale. Uh, the audio isn't quite as clean as the Bofang was. I don't know. Really? There, there's just something funny about it. It's, it's clear enough to copy okay, but it just sounds off a little bit. Really? The Bofang sounds better. You know, there's, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just I prefer clean sound. Okay, hang on. Let's go right back to the Bofang. Okay, so we're back on the Bofang. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, how now, brown cow? Uh, now that I've heard the both of them. Yeah, the Bofang's got a little more bottom end to it. It's It sounds warmer, if you, if wow. you can kind of picture that. Um, so either, either radio will work, but they both sound just like you normally sound. Wow. All right. Well, thank you for the report. Well, folks, there you heard it. He likes the Bofang better, or he didn't like it any worse. I'll just put it that way. Well, so that was a surprising result. I didn't expect him to say that he liked the sound on this one better than the Icon, but that's what he said anyway. Uh, let's do a quick power test, and then I'll give you my final conclusions on this thing. So we're going to do, uh, we already did the two meter. The 144, as you could see earlier, I had the 8 watts on there. Uh, we got 223,500 pulled up on the uh, VFO right here on high power. And we've only got a 5 watt slug in there, and it's not quite all the way. So it's supposed to be 8 watts, but we're just a bit, a bit under 5 watts there. So not quite the full amount. And here we are on uh, 446, 470. So it's not really slamming the 5 watt slug, it's just a little over 5 watts. I'm going to call it 5.5 watts, so a little bit short on that. But we did get the full 8 watts on 2 meters, uh, so that's pretty good right there. Now the uh, battery life on this thing does seem to be pretty good. Um, I did a lot of testing with it. I had a pretty long QSO after I got off camera with those guys. A couple more guys jumped in there. And uh, the battery life held up very well. All the testing I did, I did charge the battery fully for the power test. I wanted to see what it would do on a full charge, and it did pretty good. The cutting out of the, of the sound earlier, when I thought it was his microphone, it turns out this receiver was the one that was cutting out. A couple other guys joined in. They weren't cutting out as bad, but when they get loud, that's when they started cutting out. So I suspect if there's a high deviation amount... The receiver doesn't like it, so um, it's not really a problem, but just so you know, it was doing that. It wasn't him. It was this radio. But overall, I do like the radio. I think it's uh, worth it, especially for the price of, you know, $70 around the time of this video in 2025. So, you know, it's worth that. It's a good radio. So anyway, I hope this video has been helpful for you. Thanks for watching.